Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratories, Building 200, home of the APL Space Department. Uh, my name is Mike Buckley, and I'm from the APL Public Affairs Office. And today we're here to celebrate and to rename the Radiation Belt Storm Probes, the first dual spacecraft mission specifically created to investigate the Van Allen radiation belts above Earth. Now, the belts are named for the pioneering scientist who discovered them, James Van Allen. The twin probes, which were built and are now being operated here at APL, launched on August 30th. Now, since then, the operations team, just a few buildings over, has been working to get them ready for a two-year primary science mission. Now, we'll learn more about that in a bit, and we'll also have a special announcement about the mission itself. Now, taking part in today's event are Dr. John Grunsfeld, the Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate, NASA Headquarters, Dr. Ralph Semmel, the Director of the Applied Physics Laboratory, Dr. Mona Kessel, Program Scientist for the Radiation Belt Storm Probes, NASA Headquarters, Mr. Rick Fitzgerald, the APL Program Area Manager for Civil Space. I'd also like to welcome Ms. Sarah Van Allen and Cynthia Van Allen Schaffner, the daughters of James Van Allen. We thank you all for being here. Uh, we'll start with some remarks and an announcement from Dr. Grunsfeld. Well, thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I'm really thrilled to, uh, to be here on this beautiful fall day at the Applied Physics Lab uh, and to recognize you know, all the, the great folks here. Uh, you know, some, some of them, uh, Rick is actually my neighbor, uh, and I saw him at the launch wearing a tuxedo, uh, and then I saw him in my neighborhood uh, on a plastic bicycle. And, uh, you know, a very different contrast, and that was during commissioning, so he was out getting some recreation. And of course, Sarah and Cynthia, thank you so much for coming. I'd like to start by reading a letter from a very good friend of ours, someone who cares very much about science. And this is a letter from Senator Barbara Mikulski to the Honorable Charlie Bolden, Administrator of NASA. Dear Administrator Bolden, congratulations on the successful launch and commissioning of the Radiation Belt Storm Probes. As the first twin spacecraft mission designed to explore our planet's radiation belts and part of NASA's Living with a Star program, the RBSP mission will provide important contributions to our scientific understanding of the sun's influence on Earth and near-Earth space. It will also enable us to make space weather predictions necessary to safeguard life and society on Earth and the human and robotic exploration of space. The probes have successfully made it through the commissioning phase because of the excellent work of the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, which designed, built, and launched RBSP within their cost and schedule commitments. NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center is another Maryland institution that has contributed to the success of RBSP by managing the Living with a Star program. I am delighted that you are renaming RBSP to honor James Van Allen, an early member of the JHU APL, uh, 54 years after the historic discovery of the Earth's radiation belts. I thank the members of the RBSB team for their dedication to the advancement of science and the U.S. space program. I look forward to hearing about the pioneering discoveries of the radiation belt storm probes. Sincerely, Barbara Mikulski, Chairwoman, Subcommittee of Commerce, Justice, Science, and Related Agencies. NASA is deeply indebted uh, to Senator Mikulski uh, for all of her support for science and for NASA and for our country. Uh, thanks to Senator Mikulski, uh, NASA science and Maryland science is the best in the world. Go Team Maryland. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Not only do we have the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab and this great new science facility here in Building 200, uh, but we have the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope programs, Goddard Space Flight Center, Space Telescope Science Institute, Johns Hopkins, just to name a few, uh, and a couple of Nobel Prize winners to boot here in Maryland. I'm so pleased uh, to be here representing, representing Charlie Bolden, our NASA Administrator who couldn't make it today, uh, and representing the Heliophysics Division of NASA Headquarters and the Living with a Star program. Uh, we're just doing fantastic things, and, and RBSP is uh, certainly a hallmark. So this really is a great day for science and a great day for Maryland. Congratulations to the Johns Hopkins APL team uh, for supporting the radiation belt storm probes uh, for the successful launch and commissioning and for coming in on, on schedule and budget, as Senator Mikulski said. Uh, we have to be very responsible with our taxpayer dollars uh, and also do great science, and it's always a challenge. 
These incredible spacecraft launched on August 30th of this year will revolutionize our understanding of the radiation belts and the geomagnetic, co geomagnetic cocoon which surround our Earth and allow life to flourish on this planet. Today is also a day to honor Dr. James Van Allen. Uh, as many of you know, Dr. Van Allen worked here uh, at the Applied Physics Lab. And uh, again, glad that Cynthia Van Allen Schaffner and Sarah Van Allen are here to help us celebrate. Um, 1958, Explorer 1, the dawn of the US space age. Uh, following uh, the launch of the Sputnik spacecraft, we tried uh, valiantly uh, to respond and Explorer 1 was our response, and what a response. Uh, we discovered the Van Allen belts, who know they were there? Well, we discovered radiation belts, which we named the Van Allen belts, uh, which we now know. Uh, the trapped radiation around the Earth in the magnetic field, uh, confirmed by Explorer 3 a few months later in March of 1958. October 1st, NASA was born, 1958. 10 days later, I was born, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> However, during the early part of my career, I studied cosmic rays and built experiments to go up into, uh, into space to study cosmic rays. And then just a few years later, I decided I wanted to be a cosmic ray detector and went into space and was able to actually observe trapped radiation uh, because at night with eye shades on in the space shuttle, I was able to see the flashes of light in my eyeballs uh, from radiation trapped in the South Atlantic anomaly, uh, one of the parts of the radiation belts. So I too am a radiation uh, cosmic ray detector. Over their two-year mission, these great probes, and there's some animation behind us, the radiation belt uh, storm probes will explore both radiation belts, the inner belts that I went through and the outer belts to see how they change over space and time. And that's the unique characteristic is we get both the spatial and temporal distribution. Each satellite has five instruments designed and operated by teams at the New Jersey Institute of Technology, the University of Iowa, and we have some folks here from the University of Iowa, University of Minnesota, University of New Hampshire, uh, and our friends at the National Reconnaissance Office. Even though the radiation belts were discovered over 50 years ago, we still have a lot to learn. Uh, these belts and the interaction of radiation with the magnetic fields, very nonlinear processes, uh, this is really hard stuff. Uh, and these satellites will give us a lot of insight into the interactions of plasmas with magnetic fields and energetic particles. Uh, this is of no small consequence to us on Earth. Induced currents caused by uh, disruptions in the fields, caused by solar events, uh, can disrupt satellite operations, communications, navigation, uh, making it dangerous for astronauts. Uh, and for those of you who may have something called a cell phone, you know, also our daily life here on Earth. This is really a fantastic project. Uh, the science is not only interesting and challenging, it's also important. I congratulate the entire team. Uh, I don't want to you know, name too many names and, and, and miss anyone, but uh, really this is the best of the best uh, at NASA, at APL, and in the heliophysics and uh, earth science communities. We have a very talented and disciplined team. And uh, now I believe we have a small presentation, so I'd like to invite Sarah and Cynthia to come forward. And I will read the text. Uh, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is pleased to announce the decision to rename the Radiation Belt Storm Probes mission Van Allen Probes to honor the legacy of James Van Allen 54 years after the historic discovery of the Earth's radiation belts. Aww. Thank you so much Thank you. and congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Experience before. <laughs> and if you'd like to make some remarks, we'd love I, to, I, to hear from I, you. I'm delighted, and, and I thank you. This is a great honor for my sister Sarah and I to be here for this renaming event. Um, as many a, of you know, our father continued to pore over his data and publish the findings until the final weeks of his life. And to have his name attached to this wonderful pair of spacecraft, 
that gets to orbit through the radiation belts for the next two years and maybe beyond would have been such a great pleasure for him. Um, I, I remember reading that when he heard Sputnik, he said, oh, what a thrill. So you can imagine how thrilled he would be on this occasion. We've talked a little bit about 1958. I was uh, 11 years old, and we celebrated my birthday on January 28th, which was quickly overshadowed three days later by the launch of Explorer 1. I didn't realize that I could be so quickly forgotten, but <laughs> it did happen. Between then and the launch of Explorer 3, Daddy's life was just a blizzard of activity. The only time we saw him was at breakfast, occasionally for dinner, or if we went to the old physics building. You don't remember the old physics building. But in the basement, you could hear the beep, beep, beep of the Geiger counter. And there were these long rolls of, of paper with all kinds of red markings on them. And they had the orbit charted along the perimeter of the room. And then there were blackboards. And on the blackboards, in those days, no computers, you know, black, blackboards were all the formulas and all, and all of the sketches. And it was here that um, Daddy and his colleagues and his students uh, worked feverishly analyzing all this data that was, that was coming in, in this kind of mixed state of excitement and fatigue. And I'm sure many of you are acquainted with that sort of sense of excitement when you haven't had days and days of sleep. It was said then, space science is a character building business for both the participants and their families. And this I agree, and you probably all have experience in the same way. I keep above my desk a handwritten list of precepts which my father followed during his research. And I was looking it over last night, and there are four that I thought I would just read because it tells you a lot about him, and maybe it's still useful, I'm not sure. Um, number one. Organize thoughts in a logical one, two, three manner. Two, solve problems in the simplest but not the most complicated way. Three, all team members are important as individuals. And the final one, discovery and new ways of looking at old problems is very exciting. I suspect there are among you those who would share my father's sentiment for an occasion somewhat like this, that you're feeling this is a very nice event, but when do you get to go back to work? So I thank you all for coming. We deeply appreciate this in our, in our family, and we wish you continued success in the two years and maybe more that follow. And we thank you very much for this award. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It uh, is an honor to be here today, both to represent APL on this uh, very special occasion and to welcome colleagues, friends, and of course, very distinguished uh, visitors. Uh, let me first point out, reiterate, if you will, that we are in Building 200, which is one of the newest buildings at uh, the Applied Physics Laboratory, and it houses our space department, sometimes called our, our space sector. And what I'd like to say is that I like to view this spot as being strategically placed between the sun and the Kuiper belt. Okay, and if you think of planetary terms between Mercury and Pluto, given our, our current, uh, current missions in addition to, in, in addition to this mission. Um, and while we're protected and safe here in, uh, in this nice auditorium, thousands of miles, thousands of miles above us, depending on where they happen to be at any, at any given moment, are the Van Allen probes, which 
of course, find themselves in a much harsher environment. They are being bombarded, of course, by charged particles on a basically continuous basis and by design surviving what we as humans could not. Uh, all to collect information that we will need to ensure the safety of space and terrestrial assets and I dare say people for generations to, to come. Uh, the Van Allen probes, as you, as you heard from Dr. Grunsfeld, is a scientifically profound mission that will provide uh, many practical benefits to our global society. And uh, as he also said, the mission uh, can't be reiterated enough, the mission has been delivered uh, within budget and on time by a truly amazing team uh, that includes NASA, NASA contractors, government laboratories, university-based instrument groups, and um, spacecraft developers, all working together with a, a, a group of world-renowned uh, space scientists. Needless to say, we, did, we at APL are very proud to play a key part in this historic mission. And of course, I, I would like to add, we as APL would like to add, that we thank NASA and in particular headquarters and Goddard uh, for championing and supporting this mission. It's really, it, it's really a wonderful mission for, for, uh, for everyone. Uh, while the Van Allen probes were 11 years in the, in the making, for APL, this journey actually began 70 years ago. And in fact, APL just celebrated its 70th year anniversary. We were founded in 1942. Uh, James Van Allen, a new PhD graduate from the University of, Hawaii, of Iowa, joined the laboratory in that founding year of the lab uh, to help develop something called the VT Fuse, which uh, helped bring an end to World War II, both for its contributions to fleet air defense as well as to the, to the Army. And I will say that uh, demonstrating his, his dedication to the nation, Dr. Van Allen was actually commissioned into the Navy while serving at, at APL so that he could have the access that he needed to test the fuse. I mean, it really, it was incredible uh, dedication on his part. Uh, he returned to APL after, after the war uh, to conduct high altitude studies using captured German V-2 rockets. Later at the University of Iowa, and of course, as you heard, uh, the University of Iowa actually provided the Van Allen probes with one of the key instruments uh, that it will be, that, that it's relying upon. Uh, Dr. Van Allen discovered the Earth's radiation belts, which now bear, his, now bear his name. So when NASA asked APL to build and operate the spacecraft to study the Van Allen belts, as you might imagine, it was indeed very poignant for us as, a, as an organization. Uh, the Van Allen probes are among the latest of the 68 spacecraft that APL has built, but the historical connection uh, between the laboratory and Dr. Van Allen runs even deeper. And so let me tell you, let me share one story that, that I had the opportunity to, to read about, and that is that uh, Dr. Van Allen actually bumped into his future wife, Abigail, while at the laboratory. And when I say bumped into, I actually mean that quite literally. Apparently, while uh, driving to work one day, their cars had a minor bumper-to-bumper -bumper collision, as Dr. Van Allen put it. Um, and from what I could tell, I, I, I couldn't dig this out, and perhaps our distinguished visitors could shed some light on this. I don't know if they ever agreed on who was at fault. But apparently things turned out quite well. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's, not my pla it's not my place to actually, yes. Yeah, uh, so while Dr. Van Allen didn't get to see the launch of the spacecraft that now carry his name, we are fortunate that his daughters Sarah and Cynthia are here today for this renaming ceremony. And in fact, we were honored to have Sarah uh, participate in launch events, both in Florida and uh, to be present in our mission operations center here at the laboratory, our mock, on August 30th to observe the launch. And given that both of them remember uh, their father's radiation belt discovery and the excitement it caused, having Sarah in particular in the mock for the launch extended the family ties to this critical research, this critical mission, as well as to APL. So we're glad to 
actually strengthen the connection that has been there for all these many years. So in closing, let me uh, say that we are now looking forward to two years of very exciting research and discoveries, and we are indeed honored to be able, as an organization, to uh, contribute to the mission and to add to the legacy of one of the founders of the field of space science, Dr. James Van Allen. Thank you very much. Afternoon. It's been my privilege to be the program scientist for the last several years for the RBSP mission. And I want to join my esteemed colleagues here in thanking APL especially for the persistence and the dedication that has led to a successful mission up to this point, and I'm sure it will go beyond. Um, in particular, on the engineering side, and I do want to name a couple of names here, I want to thank Rick Fitzgerald for doing an excellent job as program manager. I want to thank Jim Stratton, who I think is in the audience, and, and uh, Kim Cooper, who is in the audience. And there, there are also so many others that, that I won't name names, but I, I, I noticed you here. You're very important to this effort, and I wanted to call you out. On the science side, then, there has been Barry Mock, and Nikki Fox, who's in the audience, who it's been my pleasure to work with. And I am anticipating a continuing working relationship through the entirety of this mission. So that has, that has been wonderful up to this point. But now it's really time for the instrument teams to shine. This is the time when we're launched. We're starting to bring data back. And we actually have one of the PIs from an instrument team, Craig Kletzing, who is in the audience, who it's, um, it's special also for James Van Allen because he's at the University of Iowa and, in fact, worked under some of the people from the original team. So this is, this is quite an honor and, 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 and quite important for this uh, ceremony today. So we're marking the transition between commissioning and operations, when the science is what we're going to focus on now. We're trying to get to understanding, ideally to the point of predictability, of how the energetic particles in space change in response to energy changes on the sun. So that is our, our basic objective. And we have instruments that are capable of doing that quite well. We have, in fact, particle instruments and field instruments. The particle instruments cover the entire range of all of the energies that we expect in the radiation belts, starting with, and, and there are three of them. We have, an, we have ECT, I, I won't name them all, um, name out the acronyms, but we can, we can look them up later, just because it's, uh, they're, they're very long and they don't tell you that much more information. It, it, they are all particle instruments. ECT is composed of three instruments. The lowest energy to the medium energy to the highest energy. And then there's RB SPICE, which is the, the radiation belt, but actually more of the ring current measurements and composition. And then the highest energy from RPS, which is actually an instrument contributed by NRO to the RBSP mission. And that is studying the inner belt, so of particular importance um, to astronauts. Uh, and that will, that will give us some, some brand new discoveries. In fact, it already is. There are already, even in commissioning, we saw two solar storms. And all the instruments weren't on, but quite a few were, and then they were coming on all the way. And so we're seeing these storms coming in, and the data is amazing. The data is fantastic. I'm not going to talk about the data anymore today because some of this is coming out at a press conference at American Geophysical Union meeting in December. And, but I can tell you, because of the, the improvements in the instrumentation, because of the sophistication of them, the data is amazing. So I um, just as, a, as a, I picked up this book the other day. Now, you might wonder, why am I bringing a book here? But the reason is, I was looking at it. I was skimming through the acknowledgments. And in the acknowledgments, and I'll read this, it says, I'd also like to thank the Van Allen belts for protecting us from the harmful solar wind. And so, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It's just, it's just a novel. But it's a good author. I, I happen to like it. But, but 
it's, it's amazing because it's showing that Van Allen belts have a resonance in our society. The name and the, and, and the situation have, have really captured people, which is pretty exciting. So I want to finally take this opportunity, since we are in a transition period, to finally take the name and put it in its rightful place. <laughs> if I don't drop it. The Van Allen Probe. And we look forward to a very exciting mission. And that, with that, I want to turn it over to Rick Fitzgerald, who will tell us about the commissioning that got us where we are now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mona. Uh, want to welcome everybody again, the Van Allen family. So great that you could be here today. All of our other distinguished guests. Um, what a great day. What a privilege it is for me to stand here and represent the RBSP team, now the Van Allen team. Um, I wish uh, they could all be here uh, to be part of this event. Um, but if we did that, they would fill the stage and, and, uh, and beyond. Um, but one thing that, that I, in your remarks that resonated with me in your dad's notes is um, the individual team member. And that's something that's remarkable about this team. So that's a synergy that, I, that you can take away from this. This team that we put together is like none other I've ever worked with. And they were fantastic. They worked hard. They're smart. And we really worked together well um, over the course of the last five years. It was such a pleasure uh, to be part of that team. And, and I served as the project manager since June of 2007. And that's, that's why it's such an honor for me not to stand here before you, but to represent all of them. Um, we're very glad here at APL, as Dr. Semmel said, to be part of such an important mission. And um, as we said, the Van Allen belts were the first discovery of the space age. And, and what a way to be involved in the space program than to follow that up with this mission and, and, and come out hopefully in the next months and years with, with the science that these, that these satellites are going to produce that is so important um, for all of us. And I think in some of the talks that we've given, uh, the average person doesn't understand how important um, the radiation belts are. So it was really nice that you had that novel, but somebody recognizes that these are protectors, shields around the Earth, and that occasionally they, they, they bump around and, and can cause problems for us if we don't understand how they, how they react. Um, the preparation for this mission um, dates back more than 11 years. And, um, and so that was the first time the science folks got together to say, what, a, what kind of a mission do we want to develop? And, and that's when RBSP was born. And, and it's really been, as I said, about the last five years that we, we got the team together to come to the details of the design, the build, the test, and eventually the successful launch that we had on the uh, 30th of August. Um, the launch campaign, you were here um, to see, although we had some delays, to see the, the final launch. The launch campaign was also very, very successful. So um, that team that I talked about came together and, and um, put the, the, the mission together down at the Cape, ready for encapsulation onto the launch vehicle in just a systematic way that I've never seen. So it was, it was a very um, uh, successful campaign, but the launch itself was a little bit stressful uh, since we had two launch attempts and we had to scrub and then we had a, a tropical storm in between and then we came back on the 30th and ultimately had a great day on August the 30th. Um, the commissioning activities have gone very well. The same team that, that put the mission together um, worked uh, hand in hand with the folks that are operating the mission, and um, because of all that all that handoff and training that we did, um, the commissioning's just gone so so very well. So we're really looking forward to the science that we're going to get in the next uh, coming years. Um, the the first part of the commissioning again, some of the stressful things that you worry about that I worried about for five years before we launched those deployments. Um, they're complicated. The first thing is you need the solar panels to come out. We saw that happen about 13 minutes after launch, so that was one breath that I took. And next, all those wire booms and antennas. Um, very complicated, but all of our instrument folks are the best at what they do. And, and as I'd hoped and as I expected, they, they went fantastically well in all their deployments. So, um, so kudos to, to um, all of our instrument partners for all that hard work, and, and now we're ready to take the science that those um, instruments are, are designed for. So looking forward, um, phase E 
um, which in NASA terminology is the science data gathering portion. Um, we're very happy to be in that phase of the mission and, and looking forward to the science results. And I can't wait for the AGU to see uh, what this press release is going to tell us about the science that we've gathered already. So it's, um, it's my pleasure to be here today and to say congratulations to the Van Allen family, congratulations to the team that put this mission together. And uh, what a fitting way um, to move forward into phase E than, than to be named after the discoverer of the belts that we're studying. Thank you very much. Okay, so I don't think if we don't have any questions from the folks listening in, then I can say that that wraps up the ceremony for today. So I want to thank you all for coming. Thank our participants for taking part. I want to remind everybody to follow along with this mission on the web at www.nasa.gov slash Van Allen probes. That's a new one now. Uh, you can also follow along on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, so again, thanks for coming and have a great weekend.